I'm Mark Wallace. I'm a full-time traveler. In 2016, I left the United States with the goal of riding my motorcycle across every continent except Antarctica. I wanted to see the world, and because nobody was crazy enough to do it with me, I decided I'd do it alone. It took me three years, but I finally did it. And then I just kept going. I'm still riding, still exploring, and my wanderlust is untamed. My name is Mark Wallace, and these are my stories. This story is about South America, and specifically Patagonia, as the southernmost part of Latin America that is shared by Chile and Argentina. Now, I'd been invited to come south by Eileen Martinez. Now, she is an adventure rider and a motorcycle rider that I've been following on social media, but we'd never actually met in person. And she told me that if I could make it all the way south to Coyhaique, Chile, that she would show me the Carretera Austral. Now that is Route 7, which is the road that winds through the most remote regions of Chile. And so I just thought, why not? I'll zip down, I'll meet Eileen, we'll see the Chilean side of the Andes Mountains in Patagonia, and then I'll cross over into Argentina and ride all the way south to Ushuaia. That is as far south as you can go in the Americas. And so this story begins in the little town of Puerto Varas. I rode south from Puerto Varas to Puerto Montt. That's where the Carretera Austral officially begins on Route 7. South of Puerto Montt, there's all kinds of waterways, and I would need to cross on two ferries. One, during the day, it's a pretty short ferry crossing, but I had a very long ferry crossing later that night. So I caught my very first ferry, and it was fantastic. It was my introduction to the Carretera Austral, and I was getting my first glimpse of the beauty that lay ahead. Once the ferry reached the other shore, I was able to ride through the mountains to the town of Ornopieren. That's where my second ferry would depart, but not for another nine hours. I'm waiting here for the ferry for uh, uh, eight hours or nine hours, something like that. Look at all of these. So many. My favorite one of all has to be this. Wrong way around. <laughs> That's great. I spent the day enjoying the view and drinking a lot of coffee. I also met a wonderful little dog, and we had some great conversations about cookies. Eventually, the sun set, and the midnight fairy arrived. After a few sleepless hours on the ferry, I arrived at Coleta Gonzala. Then I rode in the pre-dawn hours to the town of Shaiten, where I was able to rest. The next day, I made the final push south to Koyeki.
you can tell, that was one of my favorite riding days. But eventually, I made it to Koyeki, where I caught up with Eileen at the local BMW shop. She was meeting with some fans and some fellow riders to talk about her travels and to give them some riding tips. I was happy to finally meet Mark. I was excited to show him the Carretera Austral and the beauty of Patagonia. I cooked him lunch and we told each other travel stories. After lunch, we took a short day trip from Koyeki to Puerto Aysén. introduce you to Eileen. She is from Patagonia and she lives in Koyeki. She rode from the farthest south point in the Americas all the way to the northernmost point of the Americas on her motorcycle solo. Yeah. But she really knows Patagonia. She grew up here and so she has decided to be my guide and we are right <laughs> now in, uh, what's the name of this city? Puerto Aysén. Puerto Aysén. We just came Puerto from Koyeki. Aysen. It sounds like Koyeki. Koyaike. Sounds like a bad pronunciation of karaoke. Koyaike. Koyaike. Like karaoke. It's like karaoke. <laughs> you always say that. Yeah, it is. Do you like Patagonia? I love Patagonia. Yeah, yeah. It's very beautiful. I love it. It's a nice place. The following day, we began our ride south and headed to the tiny village of Puerto Murta. National Park and it's very rare to see any Wamul here but we saw two! Yeah, I mean, it's very very lucky two! Very. I never see again a uh, 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 Wamul in this road and now two. two for Mark. Two for me except for I was <laughs> trying to get my motorcycle parked and you <laughs> I didn't get a picture. Tell us again where we are. We are in Bahia Murta. This is the General Carrera Lake. And we are very close to Puerto Rio Tranquilo. And this is the avenue, the main avenue of this little town. Little, little, little town. <laughs> it's perfect. This is consomme soup. We're eating at the end of the world. I don't know. This is the end of the world. This is the end of the world. We have beer. So we're happy. <laughs> beer. Consomme. The next morning we said goodbye to Puerto Marta. We packed our things and headed south to our first major destination. We rode from Puerto Murta to Rio Tranquilo. We 
found a little place. It's uh, right by a lake. Living room. This is Eileen's room in here. This is my room in here. Mm, yeah. I, why do I get flowers? A uh, little kitchen and a workspace. Tomorrow, it's a full day of hiking through some glaciers, like through the uh, caves in the glaciers. And that's gonna be the first Patagonia video. But it's been uh, really rainy and the roads are a lot more off-road than I anticipated. And you can sort of see it's just been dirt, 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 and a lot of riding. So today it's a day of uh, catching up on some rest. And uh, yep, rest. is before sunrise and we are going now are you there yeah mm -hmm. <laughs> Eileen is here and we are going to meet our tour guide uh, we have to go with the guide to the ice caves and the glacier and I'm not a morning person at all <laughs> <laughs> so this is a challenge for me already wow. So, but it's beautiful here. It's, it's a view. blue hour. All right, let's get to the guide.
somehow Eileen convinced me to wake up again. Very early in the morning. Tranquilo means tranquil, calm, calm quiet. beautiful. The real name of this is uh, Chilenco, see? Chilenco Lake, yeah. Chilenco Lake, and Chilenco means strong waves. Yeah. <laughs> Let me just tell you something. We just took a boat ride, and I think I fractured at least two discs in my spine <laughs> because the tranquil, oh, bam! Yeah. Bam. It was very, very heavy. It was bad. <laughs> Chilenco Lake. It's Chilenco, it's not tranquilo. No tranquilo. <laughs> oh, I'm gonna have to go to a doctor, I think, now. I'm dying. We rode from Rio Tranquilo to Puerto Bertrand. We met up with a fellow adventure rider and enjoyed a fantastic lunch. Then I spent some time at the lake recording videos for Adorama TV. The next day we continued south to Cochrane so we could get some work done. After spending some time with another four-legged friend, we finally arrived in Cochrane. We found some basic lodging, a nice place to work, and unbelievably, the world's slowest internet connection. Once we left Cochrane, we were excited to cross the Andes and enter Argentina. Once we crossed the border, we would ride east to Bajo Caracoles and then turn south on the famous Route 40 and we were really looking forward to riding all the way south to El Chaltan. And then we would spend some time there, take some photos, explore things, and then ride even farther south to El Calafate. Now I'd been to both of these towns before, and I'd photographed Mount Fitzroy and the valley below, and I couldn't wait to go back and see them again with Eileen. Eileen! It's windy! It's windy!
border of Argentina and outside. It is so windy, you can't really see here, but uh, just blowing our bikes over. And Eileen has been blown over two times and I'm lucky to be on my feet. So the next 100 kilometers are gonna be insane. Eileen, what do you think of this, what we're doing? It's very windy and dangerous <laughs> for us. <laughs> Everything was perfect when suddenly my motorcycle turned off. I was very worried because we couldn't pass the night in the middle of the windy road. I thought this must be an electrical problem. Could it be a problem with the battery? We would have to ask for help. I've never had a problem before, even on my trip to Alaska. When I discovered that the problem was not the fuse, I knew it was going to be complicated. Yeah, it's funny, uh, just right now, but <laughs> there's no funny in that moment. Luckily, there's a police station here in the middle of nowhere, and they were able to get us back to this little town, and there's some mechanics here that maybe are gonna be able to fix things. I think my trip ends here, unfortunately. How sad. I'm very sad. I can't accompany Mark to the Chalten. The motorcycle is not in good conditions. I must go back. I'm really very sad at this moment. We found a hotel here in Baja Caracoles. It's not extravagant, but all things considered, it's not so bad. <laughs> we are here in Patagonia in the middle of nothing. <laughs> nothing. <laughs> but <laughs> nothing. we are very, very happy <laughs> and we will have a dinner. Yummy dinner. This is gonna be. Look at this ambiance. The swing <laughs> and a flashing light, and uh, yeah. Hola. Max is the mechanic. who is helping out. Javier. Javier is the chef. Carlito el viajero. <laughs> Bajo Cadeo. caracoles. This is such a great place. This is the meal. Homemade. Um. Mm -hmm. Pasta and bread. Mark is alive. I need two. Nobody's hurt. Everybody's good. We realize that we are really very professional riders. The next day, I said goodbye to Eileen. She was in good spirits and was able to find some friends to help her transport her motorcycle to Perito Moreno for repairs and eventually return to Koyeki. I skipped Calafate and Chaltan and rode directly to Ushuaia. The weather was turning sour and I was beginning to hear rumors of border closures and quarantines. The coronavirus had not yet arrived in South America, but it was clear that things were about to change. Time was not on my side. The ride through the Pampas was uneventful. The only danger were the thousands of Wanako that would suddenly appear on the road without warning. Hitting one of these guys would certainly be bad. After three days of riding, I arrived in Ushuaia.
So I made it to the end of the road. I got to Ushuaia. I got to the very southern point. I was taking some photos and this weird thing happened where some people um, from a tour bus recognized me from YouTube and they ran over and wanted some photos and then that meant that people that didn't know who I was thought I was somebody who I wasn't and then they wanted photos and it just got to be this weird uncomfortable thing where I was taking selfies with a ton of strangers and the whole thing was sort of ruined. It was really sort of strange. And I think that is sort of a metaphor for the old adage about it's not the destination, it's the journey. And that is absolutely true of this story. The thing that I remember is getting there. All the stuff that I did along the way, all the little dogs that I met, the meals that I had, the fun that I had with Eileen, her breaking down and how we sort of went through that and the people that we met in the little teeny town where we were, it was definitely about the journey. Well, after Ushuaia, I rode north into Buenos Aires, which is where I am right now, and then quarantine came down. And so I've been in a quarantine here for over seven months. It's one of the most strict and longest quarantines in the world. But that is a story for a different video.